Hello and welcome to Ott and Math. In this edition of Ott and Math, we're going to solve some problems involving functions with a natural base. All right, so remember natural base is just that uh, number that's derived from the expression 1 plus 1 over n to the n as n becomes, uh, as n graduates to infinity. And we get a result of about 2.718. So just think about E as a value, a, a fixed value of about 2.718. That value is an irrational number, which means that that number has no end in the number of decimal places, just like pi is an irrational number. Okay, so let's do some problems. I have, uh, we're going to simplify the expression E to the fourth times E to the fifth. And we use <clears throat> our product of the powers property. And what we do when we have product of the powers par property, we have the same base exponents are different, we just add the two exponents together, we get e to the ninth. Same property here, e to the sixth times e to the negative third. Now I'm just adding the two values together, I get e to the third. In my third uh, uh, expression, e to the third taken to the second, I use my power of the powers property, that becomes e to the sixth. Okay, moving on. We're going to use a calculator to evaluate the expression, and then we're going to round the result to three decimal places. So you should have a calculator handy, and I'm going to motor through these. So I have e, and I'm going to take that to the third power, and that gives me a result of about 20.086. Uh, so I'm going to round to three decimal places. So e, again, is just a value, 2.718. You're going to take that to the third power. Now I'm going to take e... <coughs> Uh, to the negative 2 and I get a result of 0 0.135 0 0.135 and that makes sense right because I'm taking the value of 2.718 I'm creating uh, a fraction out of 2.718 and I'm taking that value to the second power and I get approximately 0 0.135 okay e to the sixth uh, 403.429, 403.429. These values you should get in your calculator. And finally, e to the zero, remember anything to the zero is just going to be one. All right, moving on to the next set of problems. Tell whether the function is an example of exponential growth or exponential decay. So again, you've got to remember that e is 2.718. That value of b, remember in exponential growth or decay, if that value of b is greater than one, then I know that I have exponential growth. So in this case, this is going to be growth. Then I have e to the negative x, all right? So let's think about that. e to the negative x is the same as 1 over e to the x, right? So 1 over e to the x is going to be, this is a fraction, 1 over 2.718 gives us a value that is between 0 and 1. I take that to the uh, x power, and I can see that what I get is a dk function. And finally, 3e to the x. <clears throat> Again, e to the x is going to be, uh, e in this case is going to be the b value. b value is greater than 1. So again, I have a growth, <clears throat> excuse me, function. Moving on to the next set of problems, and I believe this is the last set. I'm going to match the function with a graph. <clears throat> so I have e to the 2x, so it's just like uh, 2.718 to the 2x, so if I say x is equal to 1, I have 2.718 squared, so 2.718 squared, or e squared, is going to give me a value of approximately 7.4, uh, so e to the 2x, where I have 1 as my input, gives me a value of about 7.4, and I take a look at 1 here. Now, it could be b, and it could be potentially c. So let's see what happens when uh, x is equal to 0. When x is equal to 0, e is equal to 1. So it looks like this value here, and then uh, 1, 7.4, uh, gives me b as the uh, match graph for this particular function. Now I say e to the 2x minus 2. Now this is pretty easy. I know that I'm just going to shift this graph right to the right 2. So if I shift that graph to the right 2, uh, when I have a value of uh, 0, let's say I have a value of 1 
four x. Two times one is two, minus two gives me zero. E to the zero is going to be one. So if I put in uh, one for x, I'm gonna get out a one for y. So one for x gives me two, two minus two is zero, e to the zero is one. So a is going to be the result for my second function. And finally, I look at, so I've just shifted, uh, for this particular function, I've just shifted the graph to the right two. So this particular graph, I shift to the right two, and it ends up being this particular function here. Right, my last question, uh, my last graph, <clears throat> I have f of x is equal to e, the two x minus two. In this case, I'm gonna shift the graph down. Good morning. All right, so I take e to the 2x minus 2. I substitute in a value of 0 for x. 2 times 0 is going to be uh, 0. e to the 0 is going to be equal to 1. 1 minus 2 gives me negative 1. All right, so I have a value here of 0, negative 1. If I substitute in 1 for x, I get uh, e to the uh, 2, which gives me about 7.4. I subtract 2 from that, I get about 5.4. So my result for 1 is going to be 1, 5.4. And the answer here for this particular match graph is going to be C. All right, that's it for handling problems in E and functions with E. We've got a lot more to learn about logs coming up in the next section of IMAP.